it's true. But do you think that the that the problem that they're having over in England could be the canary in the coal mine? And it's the interesting. start of the unraveling of the government bond market and advanced economies. And then what happens to all those derivatives on top? Well, let, let, we'll start off with the first part of that. Mm -hmm. I think it was, I, I was telling, when I was watching the bond market kind of you know, sell off here globally and bond yields rising, I kept saying, they got to take action or this thing is literally going to implode mm -hmm. like now. And they no action was being taken and it was getting worse and worse and worse. Stock market was obviously reflecting that. Then all of a sudden, blink, Bank of England had said, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to start buying bonds here temporarily uh, and just for a few weeks. And now all of a sudden the major backpedal. Now they've increased it uh, twofold from what I realize, from what I understand, they doubled it. And uh, they I think said it's going to be over on Friday. Yeah, it sure. It just came out I today. I mean, yeah. today is Tuesday the 11th. So yeah, they just well, came we'll out see, today. We'll see how that plays out. Because they're already, they're already pushing the narrative. Today was, uh, for, they're doing this to stabilize the financial system. The or was it all of a sudden going to get stable just because they, they stopped buying bonds? No, the, the instability is is yes. inherent. It's in the system. And that is, it's coming apart. If central banks don't take more action, look, in my view, we could be sincerely on the cusp of a complete meltdown of the system. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, this was the front page of market watch that we could be on the edge of a, of a crash in the bond market. Finally, we're, it's getting some traction here. Uh, absolutely, this whole thing is dependent on that. Is it, it could absolutely be the canary in the coal mine, but we have to see what they're gonna do. Look, they, have, they don't have too many choices. It, they could continue to inflate, which will dilute the currency even further and exacerbate inflation. They can't look, they want to convince people that they, they can't, you know, have their cake and eat it too. You can't just get in here and just buy all, buy assets with with cash that they just make, uh, could conjure up out of thin air and there not be a price to pay for it here. And we're seeing that reflect now. Yes, maybe we, maybe this thing is going to melt down. We just got to keep our eyes on global bond yields. Watch this knee jerk reaction in the dollar, which has been going on for quite a while. That's Over strong a dollar. Yeah. Over a year ago, I was telling people, watch. My prediction was that the relative strength of the dollar compared to other countries is going to continue to rise and it was going to be shocking to people. Well, I think that played out pretty, pretty well. And I, I, I don't think we're done. Uh, that, that knee jerk higher in the dollar, I think is a big tell that there, there are bigger issues here. And it's really, you know, it's interesting how they how they sell that to people too. Oh, the dollar is strong. No, the dollar's purchasing power is getting sucked out. Right. But relative, on a relative basis, duh, you duh. know, we got it. We got, you know, uh, yeah, she, the dollar's still the prettiest bell at the ball, but that doesn't mean that it's a great place to be. And I think anyone that's in cash has got to be high as a kite. I've been telling people that for the longest time. They're killing these central banks are in a race to the bottom. They're killing their currencies by design. And now we're seeing the effects of it. Now you got the Bank of England jumping in here, you know, quantitative easing squared. And we're going to see what else happens here. Now, with regard to derivatives, you know, look, let me just, it's just people, when people hear that word, I think they freeze like a deer in the headlights. Like, right. It's the most simple thing on earth to understand. A derivative is just a derivative is, is, is a side bet. It derives value, derived derivative from an underlying asset. So, and then the, as you well know, there are layers of these. You have right. side bets on side bets. You have derivatives of derivatives. It's, the system is so, so twisted. Uh, and no, you know, there's no way to actually quantify how big it is. Uh, th that's the thing too. People, it's too big for people to get their head around. So what do right. they do? They ignore, ignore it. it. But you know what's coming up in 2023 is they have to shift all those derivative contracts that have that don't have the SOFR language in there, still has the LIBOR language in there, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. means lots and lots of even legacy derivatives prior to 2008. And that's supposed to, all of those derivatives are supposed to shift into the SOFR language mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in 2023. So do yeah. you think that could be one of the reasons why we're seeing this level? Of, I mean, it is. It looks to me like they're trying to crash the system to justify that because they know they can't make that transfer. Let's see how low. Look, Lynette, this thing could end next week. Let's see how yeah. if we even make it into 23. I mean, who knows? I, I just have my eyeballs 
and, and mind fixated on, on what, what bonds are doing. What are global bond yields doing? Are they going to stop? Are they going to continue to sell off here? Are central banks going to take more action? Are we really at that moment where they're going to let it go? Absolutely, that could play out to be a problem. I don't know how they're going to manage to shift one thing into the other, if, if it's even going to work or it does, what's it's even actually going to work. Yeah, uh, they they well, can't well, do it. They can't do it. I we're mean, going to see. Uh, look, I see what you see, and I believe is a financial system that is crumbling around us. Mm-hmm. And it's just, a, and then look, it's the mainstream talking about it now, Lynette. Finally, you and me and some other people too, way ahead of the curve, way, way ahead of the curve on this. And, you know, to see some of this stuff getting attention on the mainstream is shocking to me. Look, they never tell the truth to people. They want to keep people happy and glee. Everything's great. Go out and spend, go melt that credit card, you know? Uh, but the fact that it's getting attention is pretty, pretty intense to me. And it maybe that tells us that we are on the cusp of it. I don't know. All I know is when I wake up every day, the first thing I, I don't care, even what stock futures are doing. I don't care. I yeah. want to know what the 10 year yield is doing. Yes. That's number one. And then mm-hmm. I want to say, okay, what are, what are global bond yields doing? What's happening over in Europe here? What is this central bank saying? Because you got to decipher that too. When a central bank is mm-hmm. trying to get you to look in one direction, you know, something's wrong. You got to exactly. look in the, at this. You say, hold on a minute here. Why do they want me to look there? No, 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 no. This that's a distraction. Let's go, let's dig a little deeper and find out what's really going on. That's how I look at everything here. I'm saying, okay, why is the media want you to, why are they focusing on this? Why, why, why? Because something else is going on. Let's just do a little research into that. And it just seems pretty obvious to me, you know, whatever they say, just think the opposite and you're going to be fine. Can we talk a little bit about gold and what's happening in the gold market? because the spot market obviously is getting whacked because after all, you can make so much more money on those treasury interest rates. And yet what I noticed when I was preparing for the event this past weekend was that the physical market uh, in the collectible coins has broken out to a, a high. And in the ultra rare coins, boy, that thing is soaring. And also in China, they're paying a $43 premium to the LBMA spot market. Well, I'll tell you something interesting. Just reach, there's, a, there's a couple of places out here that I just go into and I see what they have laying around with they got the gold and silver. Mm-hmm. And I happen to know, I don't want to mention any names, but there's a place near, near me where I go in, I, I have a good relationship with the guy. And he says to me, he says, Greg, as soon as people come in here, it goes out the door. He goes, I can't keep it. Um, he had a couple of silver pieces in there, some gold pieces in there, but he can't keep it because people people aren't stupid. I think mm-hmm. they get it. I think they mm-hmm. understand what they're seeing here and they're willing to pay the premium mm-hmm. f- to hold the real thing. I got it all over my desk, all over, all freaking over. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I got it everywhere. My desk. <laughs> I love to look at it, play with it, kiss it. You know, it makes me happy to have this stuff. <laughs> look at it. You and me were so funny. Is it look where are we nuts? But um, no, no, we're safe. <laughs> we're people safe. People are getting it. They're starting to understand it. At least, at least some people are. Look, I've said to people, I've said this exact thing that this is some kind of a natural selection. And then even those of us that are the most prepared, have we may not get through this because I feel that they're pushing us into a worst case scenario. That is a meltdown of the debt bubble, a new system. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna take a lot of people with it by design, more control. And we really could be on the cusp of, of, of this happening. We just, and, and the, the beauty of this is we don't have to guess. I don't know if you're familiar with the MMRI, the Manorino Market Risk Indicator. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, an, yeah, it's something I have on my website. It's, it's very, very simple. It's a little neat equation that uses the 10 year yield. Um, the, the relative strength of the dollar with a little, a little cute math, and then it comes up with the number. When the MMRI first came out, it was in the 80s. Okay, we are now almost at 300. Over 300, according to how I've set this up, is extreme risk. Right now, we're at two, like 277 again. Oh, wow. When it first came out, it was only at eight in the 80s. 
uh, it was green, everything was looking good, the market was going up and up and up and up and up and up. And you know, now that we're getting into the higher ranges, it's free. Uh, it's right on my website, traderschoice.net. And we have uh, the links I want to everything yeah, to, yeah, all the access to look credit. at it, check it out. Mm -hmm. It's a really good indicator of, of, of what's driving the market based on credit risk. It's really all it is. And that risk is rising. It's, and, and you know, look, I've been telling people for weeks, you know, if you're long the stock market, you should be maybe thinking of hedging your position somehow, get out of the market altogether, let this ride out, um, have some kind of way to at least protect your investment. And a lot of people, they're stuck in things they can't get out of, exactly. which is unfortunate, you know, they are an, an investment that only makes money as the market goes up. And of course, that's a setup in itself, too. Who imagine who set something like that up? Oh, you can only make money when the market goes higher.